it was summer 2002 and I left the country for the very first time. I got on an airplane, which was terrifying after the events of 9-11 and went with my high school youth group to Jamaica for about a 10 day mission trip. We had a sister church there. My dad had been to Jamaica before and my youth leader knew the area and we served in an entirely different country, culture, context, um, with everything that had happened in the last eight or nine months surrounding us. Um, and there's a lot of things I remember from that trip, um, experiences that consequently shaped the rest of my life as a rising sophomore in high school. But what I remember most about that trip is that on the last night, we had a foot washing service. And each youth group that was there um, washed each other's feet. And as a lowly rising sophomore, there were a few seniors in the youth group who, well, I didn't like them and they didn't like me. Let's just say it that way. But the way the line worked itself out is that one of those seniors who, right or wrong, who knows, um, had inflicted a lot of hurt on me, was the person in front of me who had to, after she got her feet washed, had to wash my feet. And it was really uncomfortable in that line. It was really awkward. I found myself wishing that the our youth group had lined up in a different way, that anyone else in the group would have been the person to wash my feet. My feet, which were size 10 and wide, well, they still are, but size 10 and wide and not having a recent pedicure. Um, I was really self-conscious. Anybody else, the boys I had crushes on, the, the friends, the people I didn't talk to, um, anyone else but this person. And instead what happened is that when we both sat down, me in a plastic 60 style school chair and she on the ground to wash my feet, I sobbed. I sobbed like a baby. <laughs> it was such a powerful moment to have been in a place that was so uncomfortable, so forward, um, to build new relationships and to serve people who, oh, the best that they had would have been the worst. I would have walked past it and said, next option, please. And it all just kind of peaked in that moment, in that church camp, gymnasium, auditorium space, in that orange chair. And as she washed my feet and she blessed them and she crossed them, this senior in youth group prayed for me and hugged me. And we cried together. Our relationship after that moment didn't change much. She graduated, she was still around, but she graduated and went on. I continued through youth group. But there was that moment, there is that moment that I still hold on to and imagine if she thought about it, she probably does too. I've had my feet washed and washed the feet of others um, as we celebrate Monday, Thursday countless times. I've been a retreat leader who's done it. I've been a pastor who's done it. I've been a youth pastor who washed the feet of youth and held them as they sobbed because there's something powerful about a foot washing. Yes, it's gross, and yes, we're embarrassed by our feet and all of those things. But when the spirit swirls, that all gets pushed aside. And it's really easy to imagine Jesus looking you in the face, loving you, washing you, blessing you, sealing you, claiming you. And that's what we celebrate today. That's what we celebrate on Monday, Thursday. We celebrate the Christ, our Christ, our Savior, taking off his cloak and wrapping a towel around him and getting down and washing people's feet. Feet that were a lot more disgusting than any feet in 2020, let me tell you, 2022, let me tell you. 
But that's what Jesus does. With hours left, maybe a day and a half, probably less, probably like a day, Jesus, in that moment, washes feet. We talk all the time about if you only had a day left, what would you do? Jesus had a day left and he broke bread with his disciples and he washed their feet. And that, that action through ripples into the world that continues to change who we are. Towels and scripture and bread and juice or wine. On this day, this commandment Thursday, this Monday Thursday, upends anything we'd previously known and changes us. So whether it's washing your hands or washing your feet or like Dan said in his newsletter, washing the dogs or your children or grandchildren, those towels, that soap, that that washing and being made new may on this day, this Monday, Thursday, and subsequently every day, um, leave room for the spirit to move in your midst. Just a reminder tonight, there will be a little bit of washing in service, nothing to make you too uncomfortable. There'll be communion. Um, And we'll celebrate dinner together, just as Jesus did with his disciples. Dinner is at 6 in our fellowship hall, and worship is at 645 in the sanctuary. I hope you'll join us.